We are back after I have now been canceled on Twitter, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. <laughs> For my Dylan Dennis, Logan Paul takes. Um, but today, Sensei, I great. am on the road as this video is going out. Oh, wow. Yep, I am right now in Dallas, Texas. Um, just to update you on the on the landscape here, there's booty shaking. Um, Earth is quaking. Uh, Dallas wow. girls do it different. Not necessarily as good as the Nashville girls, but just <laughs> a little foresight here. You know what I'm saying? Might not come back home. You know what I'm saying? Might have stayed out here in good old Texas. But while I'm here, I am uh, I'm commentating the Nate Diaz and Jake Paul fight. If you didn't know, um, no big deal. Just doing it for the dude. You know. Doing it for the people. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, Killing it. And with your boy, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're doing it with Adi Oladipo, Ariel Helwani, Todd Grisham. Craziness, man. Craziness. Now, I did find this out. I'm actually... So good news, bad news. I'm doing the prelims, um, and then I'm not doing the main card for the U.S. So I think that's going to be Ariel, Todd, and maybe Chris Mannix. I'm not sure. But... I'm actually doing the main card for the rest of the world. Whoa, so, that's sick. That's though, pretty bro. cool, dog. I'm that's super crazy. pumped. So I didn't even know that till I checked the little list we got yesterday. I was like, oh shit. I don't know if I'm play by play or what's going on. This might right. be my first time play by play, which is crazy. Um, the first time play by play, I guess, for the zone. But yeah, I'll do my best, man. But anyway, guys, real quick, I need you to stop the video and listen for a second because yes. Face Sensei is about to make his prediction for Jake Paul versus Nate Diaz. But before he does, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video and what's going to help us with some of these predictions, mybookie.ag. That's right, guys. It's the place to be for all of your sports betting needs. And Face Sensei, you know what I'm saying? He's itching. He's feeding a little bit for these picks. Sensei, talk to him. <laughs> Listen, Jake Paul, Nate Diaz, we... This fight is like right down the middle. Yeah. This is a, this is combat sports is tough to bet on, but this fight is even tougher because you got Nate. You know he's retired, but he's a dog, and Max. I think underrated as a boxer. Max. Right. First time seeing him, and then Jake Paul underrated. Yeah. You know hated by almost everyone, but now is like the new love guy. Yeah, yeah. Onto the scene and has a chance now to upset the entire community again. Once again. And shock the world. So, man, dude, I don't know, dude. You were you were explaining this to me. Yeah, so essentially, if Sensei was a betting man, I was trying to guide him in the right direction. <laughs> he but when was. he uses code the breakdown at my bookie when he signs up, just like you guys should, for up to five hundred dollars in deposit match bonuses, he said, "Wait, I'm looking at that Nathan yeah, Diaz dude. by decision plus eight thirty six is what it sits at right now." Because honestly, I was like, "That's that's getting a bit disrespectful to Nate Diaz." That's, that was my first like response. Bro, just look like, at the money line. Jake's a minus four sixteen, son. That's a pretty that's wide in, gap. That's insane. And I again, I'm not a bet man, but I may be pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing this, since they say, "Yo, just throw that breakdown check one time. Let's go ahead. Let's right one on time, this, right, right on, on there. We going to Vegas for that." But listen, you guys don't have to go to uh, Vegas. You can do it right here at yes. mybookie.ag. And again, it isn't just the Nate and Jake fight. That is the one coming up this week. And again, lines may have changed by the time you guys are seeing this, but I would get in now if you can and make sure, one, you guys are of legal age, and two, you guys do gamble responsibly. But it isn't yes. just this fight. UFC fight's coming up. We have football season around the corner, all that and more, using code the breakdown when you sign up at mybookie for up to $500 in deposit match bonuses. Thank you to my bookie for sponsoring. And Sensei, I'm going to have to watch you this month, man. I'm going to have to watch you spending that breakdown <laughs> yes. money this month. We're going we yes. to head up the account. Keep an eye. We're going to make sure. <laughs> but you guys, make sure you do the same. Gamble responsibly. Thank you to my bookie for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get into Sensei's picks. We haven't got That's sick. your thoughts, your final predictions Ooh. for Nate versus Jake and it's now time to do that, Sensei. It's time to put you under the same damn pressure you just hit me with a second ago. <laughs> so I want to know who wins this fight, Jake Paul or Nate Diaz, and why? Mm, this is a tough one. But did you saw that clip of Jake? Pull up that clip of Jake, the recent clip. Yeah, the him hitting the body uh, body pad. Yeah, a little one, two, three, then a little you know body hook, then left hook back up top. I like. I like seeing the left hook work, you know? Boom, boom, boom. To the body, upstairs, and then you already know what was coming behind that. That right hand was about to unload, son. 
Jake is in probably the best shape I've ever seen him in, by the way. Yeah, man. He's in crazy good shape right now. Boom. Like, look at that. What is that? Where did that come from? Wait, what is this thing? That that That's not a normal shoulder, son. He's been training, bro. Training. Got Larry Wade in camp with him. That's a former KSI coach. Oh, wow. Yeah, bro. Wow. He's got Larry there? Got third chambers here as well. Um, Got... Shane Mosley in camp, Jay Leon, the whole team switched up. Um, well, not the whole team. Jay Leon's still there, but a switch up in camp, big time. So Jake is 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 looking wham, as they say these days. How many rounds is this? I think they've been talking about 10, at least eight. I don't know, but I had heard there was like talks of 10. I, I don't know yet. Um, Isn't it this weekend? Yeah, but I, I'm, I don't know if it was one of those Crazy. things where Jake was just putting it out there to be like, oh, let's do 10 right. instead, and it's not official. So I'm going to stick with it. So here's the thing. <sighs> Man, when you hear 10 rounds and you hear cardio and you know that Nate is so durable mm -hmm. uh, and doesn't really get caught, doesn't get knocked out, you lean towards him, you know, but it's like, it's hard to to vote against him. Yeah. Nate, Nate Diaz, because he's just, yeah, a lot, like 10 rounds, it's like, oh, Nate Diaz in 10 rounds. If he had it's fought 10 rounds his whole paper, career, he'd, yeah. probably be un, he'd probably be undefeated. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, But. And then you have Jay, I, I'm right back to where I was with Jake and Anderson, bro. And I was like, ah, I know. How does he get? How does he get that done? I know. I know Anderson's older, but still, it's Anderson Silva, dog. Yeah. In, ter in terms of the striking battle, and and Jake, I boxed him. You know, I boxed him. And he caught him, but he he won a boxing match. It wasn't just like he, he was like bigger and stronger and just right, like right. caught him with stuff. And Anderson looked super old. Anderson was having trouble out there, and and Jake was doing things defensively and offensively. Yep. Like sticking to his game plan um, and making it work. Now, I know people clown on Nate Diaz because, you know, or like casuals do because they like look at him punch mitts. The way that he punches yeah. is different. Um, and just his whole vibe about him, you know. Um, right. But that's beautiful that's work. A great, man, that's Jake. a great, that's a great combination, man. Beautiful work. Frames out, boom, jab, right hand, hook to reset, jab to reset again, bang, right hand. Nice. Yep. And the thing from Anderson, I remember in this fight that Anderson didn't throw a lot. He was just kind of standing there. Very early wanted um, to, to kind of like feel out Jake, and Jake was jabbing heavy. And the thing, oh, man, the way I see the fight going, like I'm playing in my head. You know, I can see for Nate Diaz, I can see the volume being very beneficial for him. Because the dude is going to, if he fights at his best, mm -hmm. and he fights like Nate Diaz, mm -hmm. especially in a boxing match, the volume could just be insane. And I feel like with Anderson and Jake, Anderson let Jake throw way yeah. too much. Yeah. Would just stand there in range and kind of like move his head back and forth, but just let Jake, like, because Jake's guard, right? It was just his defense was essentially his guard is what I'm saying. Yep. His guard was up, whatever. And then Anderson would let him kind of recenter, and then Jake would be able to just work on his offense and then get out of there. This is Regis Pro Grace. He's sparring here, by the way. Yep, and Nate's awkward, but he when he's on you, bro, he just pressure, 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 volume, volume, volume. Yep. Um, and if I feel like if Nate can get into eight, seven, eight, and it can get real dangerous for Jake. Yeah. Between seven and ten, you know what I'm saying? If it's ten rounds, if it let's just say it's eight, because I know that's what they officially started at. But okay, eight. Okay. If it is eight. You just dial the rounds back a little bit. My point right. is this: Nate, in my opinion, has to get started very quickly. Right, you because, can't like you can't get cracked early. And no, then, and, then and Jake down. is known to be a bit of a slow starter. Right, right. Like in especially the last three fights, he's come out a little bit flat, and I don't expect that to be the same here. But I do expect Jake, to, oddly enough, to get better as the fight goes on, even into the later rounds. Look about where he's knocked guys down at, knocked Anderson down in eight. Knock Tommy yeah. down an eight. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's why I still lean towards Jake because I think that, you know, Nate is probably going to walk, feel like he can walk him down and bring that pressure mm. and just volume. And then those arm punches, it don't work the same with boxing gloves on. And Jake also okay. maintains his power off the back foot. You know what I'm saying? He maintains. Yeah. And, and in also, the later rounds, yeah. Yes, and he counters with hard shots. You know what I'm He's not afraid to throw when you're throwing. You know, when you're walking forward, he'll duck and chuck the, that one haymaker, you know, like he like he just caught Tommy. When Tommy came with the jab, he ducked into the overhand. Yep. I could easily see Nate walking into something like that and it cuts him open or it makes him wobbly. Yep. Um, I mean, you can't get his bearings back. You know, even when you heard Nate in the interview, I don't like what, what I heard when he said, like, what's that? What's that stake here? And he's like, my head. Yeah. 
you know, so he knows he's going to be hit. So there's, he sees something clearly, yeah. you know, um, like I'm like, ah, you know, are we getting the Nate? This is not a young Nate anymore either. 37. Right. And mentally out, out the game too. Like uh, this is not UFC. This, you know what I'm saying? It's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like post career stuff that he's doing. Yeah. So I don't know how he's totally viewing it. Cause we just saw Nick who we know is a dog and he came back and we're like, we just saw Nick become a complete shell of himself with Robbie, you know, we were different like, though, in my opinion, way different, a lot different. but like obviously Nate, different. Nate was not, she like Nate. It looked like was, was not choosing to fight at that point more. So I am, I may have to fight. You know what I mean? Like he was in an interview the day, the week of going, I don't even want to be here. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? Like that's the week of the <laughs> fight. Going, I don't even camera. know why I'm doing this. I don't want to be here. I'm like, oh, right. buddy. And still, actually, you know, start out the fight. You know? But, yeah, I, I think that Nate has, and this is what I've been saying, he has to get out early on Jake. And not, and not to, like, wobble Jake or nothing, just to, to break up a little bit of the rhythm and put Jake in a position where he's been before in the last couple of fights where he has to kind of fight from underneath. And that's a difficult thing to fight from behind, right? It is. Yeah. If you can get a couple of rounds on Jake early and break up his rhythm and... and just try, I don't know, try to interrupt the jab, try to interrupt the flow of the fight and make him have to work from underneath to get back into the fight, right? To like reestablish, okay, the things I'm doing are not working in my mind or if I'm Jake in my head, is this another Tommy Fury? Is this another Tyron Woodley too? Is this going to be one of those fights? Like get him to think that the things that are that he thought were going to happen aren't and then the fight can maybe turn, but it's going to be a tough fight for Nate, I think. Yeah, this, this may be a thing where like, the chin finally catches up, you know? Definitely could. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's been, t like, hit on the chin. And I know people, we did the same thing with, to a degree, with Ben Askren, right? No one's knocked him out. No one. Jake's not knocking him out. And Jake made a good point. I was with him, when I was with him in Puerto Rico, we were talking about the size of the gloves and why it didn't, why it mattered, but not in the way people think, right? He was okay. like, everybody wants to talk about how the four-ounce gloves and no one getting knocked out with four ounces is such a big thing when they come to boxing and those 10 ounces are going to give him pads. He goes, I don't look at it that way. He goes, I see those 10 ounces as a bigger surface area to crack you with. Right, right. It is true, yes. He's like, I and feel like those 10 ounces, yeah. you know, like you, I, if I hit you anywhere with that 10-ounce glove, it's going to affect you everywhere it touches. It's like I got more of a chance to knock you, hit, touch the button with those on, you know? And the way the hand is protected, people throw differently. And you're throwing hammers, yeah. Boxers throw way harder punches because you commit to it. You're not throwing arm punches because you're worried about everything else. Yeah. The punches that are thrown in boxing when you're committing to it, even I know when I'm training, completely different because yeah. you're throwing at almost everything into your punches yeah. where you're not trying to get out of your frame and, and even fully rotate into punches in MMA. Yeah. You're just trying to you're trying to connect a lot and just kind of like turn your punches over, but no, not real fully fully committed. And that's why guys get surprised when they go in there, like MMA guys, even that's why in a guy like Dylan Dennis – who's punches, arm punches, mm -hmm. but not really turning into shots and they walk into something. Boom! It's yeah. like, what is this? True. You know? So, I guess the only question left to ask is, what do you think? How does this fight go? Dang, dude. This sucks. Put you in that position, bro. Uh, Luckily me, I can't, you know, I can't predict the commentating the fight. I know. <laughs> if I'm a betting man... Oh, it's so hard to bet this though. Uh, I, I this is what I feel, but I don't want to say it. It's like um, I think Jake uh, finishes him. Yeah, I mean it's definitely just because I think he catches Nate off. He catches Nate by a shot he doesn't see. Yeah, walking in thinking he's just gonna pressure, just like when like when he caught Anderson. Yep. Um, and then you know he just can't get his bearings or he's hurt. Uh, and he just doesn't feel the same anymore, and mm -hmm. it's just more of that, you know? Because then there's, I don't know if Nate has that, like, okay, I can load up a punch now to try to knock you out. Right. So if he gets through that, if Jake gets through the, the volume mm -hmm. and hurts Nate, it's like, does Nate just go, all right, I'm just going to keep doing what I do, just come forward with pressure. Right. And if Jake, you know, despite his senses are tingling and he's caught him once and he sets up another shot, yeah, I, I just I feel like I see that happening. A better chance of that happening, especially because I've seen it before with him doing it with Tyron Woodley, him doing yep. it with yep. with Anderson Silva, even him catching Tommy Fury late. Yeah, um, that he continues to look for those shots throughout the fight, even when he's not doing well. 
uh, I see that more than I see Jake not landing that and then just Nate being able to put volume on him for eight rounds. Yeah. You know? Now, um, I'll ask you this question. What's the, what do crazy. you give a better percent chance of happening? Uh, Nate beating Jake or KSI <laughs> beating Tommy Fury? Just a question. I don't know. Nate beating Jake or KSI beating Tommy? Uh, Nate beating Jake. Wow, dude. Cancel yeah. him. Cancel him now. <laughs> Cancel him, folks. It's 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 terrible. Unbelievable. I can't believe you said this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice try, but we're not gonna go over Nate Diaz's resume. Uh, right no, now, he, but... it's it's that's the obvious answer. But what what do you say? Like what what I guess percentage chances Nate have in this fight? What are you giving it? Man, I think it's close. I, I was gonna say I, can, I, I, I can people see this are, fight. People are looking at this like Jake's just gonna wash him. I can see a sixty forty here, dude. I'm saying 60-40 or under that. Like, we're talking... In both like, ways, by the way, 60-40. Right, exactly. 60-40, 49-51, 55-45. Right, you could that's yeah, a, you could play with it a little that's bit. What, I'm feeling that. Like, even 60-40, I'm like, ah, I can't that's give 60-40 That's what I'm saying both ways. Either, either guy. That's what I'm right, saying, like, I can't you can see 60, it. Yep. Yeah. That's, I think it's I a closer fight than people are writing down just because the way Nate hits pads, people go, oh, this guy can't box. He's another... You know Ben Askren or another. I'm like, this no, is dude. a great matchup. Like people, people look at Nate, the timing the for that, it, the yeah. timing of Nate in his career, where Jake is at is in his career, and like stylistically, yeah, perfect matchup. I think people look at Nate as just a grappler too, which frustrates me. I've never seen Gracie. Nate as just a grappler. Yeah, yes, he is a Gracie black belt. Yes, he's one of the higher level you know Brazilian Jiu Jitsu artists there is. But this guy has been boxing for years. Yes, and he was wanted to do actually pro boxing. Yeah. He was he was, in, he was in Andre Ward's camp training with Sparma Andre Ward. Andre, Andre Ward, Ward Regis Pro Grace. In his heyday. Yeah, in 2016 era, right? Like, this guy's been right. in there with some of the best dudes. So, and yeah, with Andre Ward back in like the early, like 2013 era. Like, yeah, son. So, I don't I don't see that being the same. Now, Jake could very well treat him the same as Tyron Woodley, as Anderson Silva, and we'll have to see. But, Sensei picks Jake, you said by stoppage, you think? Yeah, I, put I think a, he put a round him. on it. What are you saying? If it's eight rounds, put a round on it. Five. Okay, that's right around where Five Jake starts six. to turn up a little bit. Yeah, I think he catches him late. He's 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 done it. You know, I'm not saying anything out anything. He's done it against Anderson that's Silva. What I'm saying that's that's typically what Jake does. He starts to ramp up, and at some point there, he starts to really put it down. So there it especially is. since Nate doesn't have that threat, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll see, man. We'll see. Maybe just like you said, though, maybe his willingness to to throw down a little harder in boxing because of the the gloves being there. Maybe he can sit down on some more punches. You never know. Um, I won't be surprised if Nate wins. Also, yeah, I could I could one hundred percent agree with that. Whereas a lot of people will be, I wouldn't be. It would be detrimental for Jake one hundred percent. Right, and he yeah. won't get the. And this is the thing too. KSI will get ridiculous amounts of credit should he beat Tommy. Absolutely, he should. Yep. He should get all the flowers because Tommy has beaten. Jake. Jake will not get near the credit he deserves if he beats uh, Nate Diaz. This is, which is crazy because look at what we're talking about now. Rewind back to 2018, bro. I know. 2019. We're saying, I know. Jake is going to wash Nate Diaz. Like, bro, what are we talking about? It's crazy. Honestly, it's crazy. But. That's what we think, folks. You let us know down in the comments. Does Jake Paul beat Nate Diaz? Does Nate Diaz pull off the upset people are saying and the percentages on betting sites would show and beat Jake Paul. We don't have those answers. I'll be there on commentary since they will be here probably with a special guest on the breakdown live stream. So you guys check that out and I can't take no loss.